Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar on endometriosis, why you should remove gluten and how. Um, we'll start the webinar in about five minutes and um, I'll just sit here and welcome people in as they join. Um, and um, then at exactly 12.30, we will kick it off. I'm very excited to be able to share this information with um, so many of you who sign up. So um, I'm actually at the moment just talking to people <laughs> that are on the replay because um, nobody has signed in yet. But um, I'll just keep yucking and um, we'll, um, we'll start soon. Actually, I'll bring up the slide and then I'll come back in. Welcome. There are, there's some people signing in, which is fantastic. Um, we'll start at 12.30. So we've still got a little bit of time to um, before we get started. What I would love to do for you to do is, if you don't mind, uh, go into the chat and maybe say where you're from. Um, but also underneath me, I think here-ish, <laughs> is a tab that says polls. Um, and I would love for you to answer the poll that's there because I realized when people signed up that I had assumed that most of the people coming to this webinar would be women with endometriosis. And I think there are a few practitioners that work with women with endometriosis that are joining us as well. So I'd love to see uh, kind of what, who's, why you're here. So use the polls. I have to do this in reverse. It's mirrored, so it's very confusing. It's a bit like driving backwards with a trailer. Uh, polls, if you could look that, click what your reason for being here is today. Um, I'd love to hear where you joining us from. I'm in beautiful Picton in the Wallandilly Shire, which is just south of Sydney. We have a beautiful sunny day today. It's a bit nippy. But um, it's lovely to see the sun and I do hope that after this webinar I can go outside and recover for a little while and just soak up some sunshine. Um, and yes, I'd love to hear where you are from. Also, a little bit of a just in case, um, our internet connection here can be a little bit iffy and a little bit unpredictable. Um, unfortunately, if I lose internet connection, I lose you. And you lose me and I won't be able to restart the webinar, um, in which case I will have to not spend time in the sun this afternoon and outside. I will have to completely re-record for nobody here um, the webinar and send you all a link. So if you do lose me, um, I don't know, blame the traffic on, on, the, on the internet, and but I will get you. Um, a re-recorded version via an email link. So, but I really hope that we can, you know, stay together for the hour. And um, so I can actually share with you the power of removing gluten when you have endometriosis or if you have clients who have endometriosis. I'm just going to check and see. So there's a poll um, underneath me. Again, I'll get it at the end. Uh, there's a tab that says polls and I would love to see um, what you are here for. So whether you are here because you have endometriosis yourself or whether you're here because you work with women with endometriosis. The presentation will be targeted at women with endometriosis. It means that I won't, if you're a practitioner, I will not provide you with a lot of um, research um, and references, but I'm happy to send you something um, if you're interested, just send me an email, reply to any of the emails you've received about this webinar, and I will get you um, a very extensive list of lots of strategies and lots of signs behind using nutrition for endometriosis, not just gluten. Okay, Kelly is from the Barossa. Lovely. I will hope you have a lovely weather down there. A newly qualified nutritionist. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, I have been a nutritionist for almost two years, but I'll tell you a bit more about that when we start. Um, well, let's see. So we've still got a few people joining in. 
Um, and when you do, please go to the polls tab and tell us why you're here so that I can make sure that we, okay, so far we've got mostly people who are here because you work with women with endometriosis, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so um, hopefully I'll give you a lot of valuable information that you can help your clients with. Um, but as I said, the, when I put this workshop or this webinar on the natural medicine website, I had targeted, I thought it would be mostly women who have endometriosis who would join. So that's what I normally do. And all my webinars are for women with endometriosis. But that's okay. I can, um, I can talk to my colleagues. All right. So we've got quite a few people now coming in and we'll give it a little bit of time. Just again, if you missed it at the beginning, um, if I do, if you do lose me, if because internet connections can be a bit um, tricky and unpredictable sometimes, unfortunately, I won't be able to restart the webinar if that's the case, but I will then record a version afterwards and send the link to you. So we won't have the interaction, but I will definitely make sure that you get the content um, later. Also, because you registered, you will receive a replay link so you can come back to it and have a look um, if you want to go over things again. All right. I think we might get started. For those of you who came a little bit later, um, I'd love to hear where you're from. Um, I'm in Picton which is in New South Wales, just south of Sydney. We're a little bit high up, um, just north of the Southern Highlands, but we get the, the Highland bit and it's nippy, but beautiful and sunny. So I love this kind of weather. So let's start, shall we? Um, I'm going to bring up my slides and I will stay in screen. Um, unless I seem to be blocking myself all the time, in which case I will push myself away. So we're going to talk about endometriosis, why you should remove gluten and how to do it. Um, oh, a local, originally a local, um, from Razorback. Yes, well, I'm, I'm just five minutes down the road from Razorback, um, down the hill. <laughs> okay, so let's look at endometriosis and the role that gluten plays in managing symptoms. First, um, let me start by talking, tell you a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Anna Marika Gerritsen, or call me AMG. I came to Australia from the Netherlands um, in 95 and quickly discovered that Australians love to shorten names and I get they kept calling me Anne and I, I just don't feel like I'm an Anne. I don't respond to it. Um, so AMG has been my nickname for a long time. So feel free to call me that. Um, I haven't always been a nutritionist. I started out as a behavioral psychologist and th for 30 years I worked in tertiary education and in the corporate sector helping people change behaviors and habits um, and of course that was that's a very useful background to have now that I work with people who need to change their habits and behaviors around food. Um, I don't have endometriosis. I'm, I'm now postmenopausal, but I've never had endometriosis. Um, I decided to, I went through a bit of a midlife crisis and um, I always joke that if I had been a man, I might have gotten myself a sports car. But because I'm a single mum, I decided to uh, study on top of a full time job, commuting into the city. Um, and in 2000, I'd done this health program where I learned so much about food and, and how my how I personally interacted with food and what was what I thought was healthy food turned out to be not healthy for me at all. And I was really fascinated by our relationship with food and how we lost the connection with it as nutrition. And so when I had my midlife crisis, I decided to that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my working career. So I studied and then I graduated as a nutritionist and started an online nutrition clinic for women's health and children's health. And then in, um, uh, oh, I'll talk about what happened later. <laughs> and now I am the endometriosis nutritionist and I will 
talk to you about why I specialized in that because it was a really specific event that kind of put it all into perspective for me. I'm the author of two books, um, Healthy Eating Made Easy and Eat Your Way to Less Pain. So Eat Your Way to Less Pain is a book about endometriosis and diet. Healthy Eating Made Easy is uh, to help people just take everyday meals and make each of those healthier. Um, because of the current situation, they're only available as Kindle books um, on Amazon. But I hope I, I had hoped to be able to hold um, hard copies, but Amazon's not printing. So, huh. uh, but yes, yeah, so they are there. And I am the mum of a gorgeous 15 year old daughter who had to go back to school full time this week and is not happy because she quite liked school from home and she did quite well. But no, nope, back to school. So, my promise to you, and this is, is it for um, when I do these um, talks to women with endometriosis, is that from this webinar, I want you to learn how to successfully remove gluten from your diet and reduce your endometriosis symptoms. And to do that, I want to make sure that you understand how gluten affect your symptoms. Um, it's important to understand that removing gluten is only one of a range of strategies that are diet related, but it is a very powerful one. And it's the one that no matter what else my clients are willing to do, it is the one strategy that I recommend that always apply. Um, so it's real advice that I give to all my clients and that I help them with. And um, one person will be lucky enough to win an online nutrition consultation, but you have to stay till the end of the webinar to be eligible. So why am I interested in endometriosis? I, as I said, I didn't have endometriosis. I had periods that were at times painful and I felt very sorry for myself when that happened. Um, I... When I studied nutritional medicine, I realized that there was a clear connection between diet and endometriosis. But to be honest, I wondered why we spent that much time on it. Because as far as I knew, uh, I didn't know anyone with endometriosis. Then when I started my clinic, I liked to write blog posts and, and articles around um, those special months like asthma, Awareness Week or those sort of events um, around that topic. And so um, March is Endometriosis Awareness Month. And so I wrote in that month, uh, not this year, but last year, I started writing about endometriosis and nutrition, really thinking that there wouldn't have been a lot of interest in those articles. And then I got a call from a really good friend of mine. I'd known her for 10 years and she said that she'd been really enjoying reading about nutrition and endometriosis and that she was really happy to see that what she had worked out over a long period of time of their own research, her own ex experimentation with food, that all the things that she landed on that helped her reduce her symptoms were things that I was mentioning. And I remember just sitting in there, I had no idea what to say. All I could think of was, I didn't know you had endometriosis. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's why we had to have IVF to fall pregnant. And, yeah, no, I've, oh, yes. But, you know, I'm, and she said, throughout this process, I've been so felt so lonely um, in this whole journey. And it was so hard to find the right information. And I thought I can, what's taken her 10 years, I can do in, I can help with get you there in three months. Um, so I started to do some research. And at that time, um, the, the official figure was that one in 10 women have endometriosis. And about six months ago, that got adjusted for Australian. So we have one in nine Australian women have endometriosis that we know of because it takes seven to 10 years to get diagnosed. 30 to 50% who of women with endo struggle with fertility and that is often the time when they find out that they have it 
because they go and see a specialist who then they do all sorts of things and then they get put on medication and then they get a, have a laparoscopy to see what's going on and then endometriosis is found. So, uh, so a lot of them don't even know that they have it until that point. Now, most women with endo don't know how diet impacts endometriosis and its symptoms. And when I realized that, um, and I realized the fact that we don't talk about our, uh, about our periods, we, it, it's still something that if somebody talks to you about, I have really painful periods, because that's a, the key symptom. There are many others, but it's a key symptom. We kind of go, well, let's, you know, whatever your period is like, what the, that's what it is and just suck it up and we soldier on don't we um, and then when you try to find help um there often it's put down as women are then not taking as seriously so and it takes away an enormous amount of life um, i have clients who have to who run out of sick leave after two months into the new new year because they have to take five to, to seven days off each month because they just can't get out of bed. And then they need to go on unpaid leave or they need to take um, holiday time just to cover the days they can't work. I have clients who miss important events in their families and their, with their friends. I have one client who missed her best friend's wedding because she couldn't get out of bed. Um, it has a major impact and it's hidden. Once I found that out, I'd found my little passion, um, as you might be able to tell. Um, and that's why I decided that, okay, Kelly, um, anybody else having problems seeing me? Can you let me know if I'm here because it went or it could be on your end? How are we going? All good on my end. Okay. Good. Okay. Some can, some can't. All good. All good. Okay. Some of you can hear me. So it means that I am still online. Um, you will receive a replay link. So if anything difficult happens there, if you you if there are issues on um, with internet and you can't see the whole webinar, don't worry. You'll be able to replay it um, and it will come out later today. But I hope, Kelly, that you're back in and can hear me. Um, so it, it, this is where my, when I realized this, what a hidden uh, debilitating disease it is and how much change, difference diet can make in nutrition, I decided that that was what I was going to do. Um, and so I became the, the endometriosis nutritionist. I'm now on a mission to make all Australian women with endometriosis aware of the role of diet in their symptoms because I want them to be able to make an informed decision about how to best manage their symptoms and their endometriosis and live more of life. Yay, Kelly's back. Um, so for, for some women, diet is not going to be a feasible strategy and that's fine but if you know how diet affects your endometriosis symptom at least you can understand when you eat certain things that it might cause worse symptoms and they may not be able to change it but at least it is it, it's information and I think that is a very important element of being able to manage this disease. So let's talk about endometriosis and why nutrition makes such a difference. Um, most specialists look at endometriosis as, and, and GPs as well, as a hormonal disease, one that is caused or um, completely uh, dependent on uh, levels of progesterone and mostly estrogen. And sure, endometriosis response to levels of hormones but it's not causing endometriosis it's not explaining why there is the spread of endometrial like tissue 
throughout the body. There's been endometrial tissue found in the brain. Um, there are women who find they have lesions on their heart or in their lungs. Um, hormones themselves don't explain how that can happen, how the disease can progress. But the endometrial-like, and I, I want to stress that it's endometrial-like tissue because it's not the same as the tissue that's found within the uterus, but the endometrial-like tissue outside the uterus responds to levels of hormones and acts the same way that the endometrial, endometrial tissue in the uterus does. So it grows in response to um, hormone levels, it bleeds and it sheds. Now, tissue in the uterus has a way of being expelled from the body. But tissue that is outside the uterus, that is adhered to the ovaries or to the bowel or to the bladder or to the stomach or the gut or the lungs or even in the brain, when it responds to hormones and it starts to bleed and shed, it can't go anywhere and the body can't remove it. Uh, it's too much. So <clears throat> the tissue and that blood uh, touches other organs and tissues and then causes is one of the reasons why there is pain it also causes more inflammation and that's where i want to get to because the basis of endometriosis is chronic inflammation <clears throat> and interestingly enough if you look at the symptoms of endometriosis there's much more similarities between endometriosis and inflammatory bowel disease than there is with other female reproductive uh, system diseases. <clears throat> and you can get great results if you start to tackle the chronic inflammation. So there's two systems that are involved then. There is the immune system. And we know that women with endometriosis have an altered immune system. They have some specific problems like they have large, they produce large amounts of lymphocytes, but these lymphocytes are ineffective. We also can see um, lots of autoantibodies. Now, endometriosis is not considered an autoimmune disease, but it's an autoimmune like disease. Um, it acts in some ways that are very similar to autoimmune diseases. We also know that women with endometriosis have. Uh, ineffective natural killer cells and macrophages. So they have those cells that have to clean up whatever foreign uh, pathogens are there, but they're just not very effective. And in fact, um, a lot of my clients also find that when they, they first of all get every flu and cold that comes around and they often find that it takes them much longer to get rid of than other people. So there is really something there in the immune system. And then finally, they produce way more pro-inflammatory cytokines um, than women without endometriosis. So all that together creates this chronic systemic inflammation, which creates a beautiful environment for endometrial-like tissue that somehow ends up outside the uterus to adhere and to grow um, and to flourish, unfortunately. So the second system is the digestive system. And um, we know that women with endometriosis have a, a, micro, a specific microbiome imbalance. They have less lactobacillus bacteria strains, which means that the pH in their gut is um, very, very inviting for the bad bacteria. So um, the um, and they have more bad bacteria like E. coli, certain E. coli strains. For whatever reason, we don't quite know why that is, but they do. And also most women with endometriosis have leaky gut. So the gut permeability allows um, undigested food particles to get through the blood into, uh, through the gut wall, into the bloodstream. And of course that triggers the immune system, which is already very sensitive, um, overreacts, but is ineffective. And the main thing that the immune system does is create inflammation. And this 
this cycle creates the chronic inflammation um, and system it's not just in the gut it's not just um, in the pelvic area uh, one of the interesting studies i read the other day um, it's not about endometriosis but there was some research done into women with inflammatory bowel disease um, and the researchers looked at to see if the uterus was inflamed as well and it was there was inflammation in the uterine wall and they hypothesize that infertility is partly because of the inflammation in the uterus um, making it impossible for embryos to implant so that would create a double whammy for women with endometriosis who often have endometrial tissue on their ovaries on the fallopian tubes and so already that part of fertility is impacted and then they might also have trouble with actually implantation if they are lucky enough to um, to have a fertilized egg um, so the leaky gut is causing inflammation and more inflammation it worsens the leaky gut one of the things that i find interesting about leaky gut and symptoms of endometriosis is that many women have exper experienced brain uh, brain fog and extreme fatigue i think the fatigue is also caused by some other um, things going on but i wonder we know that if undigested gluten particles and dairy protein particles they can cross into the bloodstream and they can cross the blood brain barrier acting as opiates in the brain causing brain fog and fatigue and I do have many clients when they go on a gluten-free diet who find that their brain fog lifts and they're not as tired anymore so really some good reasons I think looking at the how all this works together why looking at the diet um, is a very powerful way because diet and nutrition can really support the immune system and heal leaky gut and address the microbiome imbalance so why should you remove gluten and i see that there's a question let me quickly check what that question is oh all good on your end Excellent. all right um it's the single most impactful change that you can experience so um most endometri most women with endometriosis are gluten intolerant whether that is because they had leaky gut and or inflammation the, it's a bit of a chicken and egg but um, i do have quite a few clients when they go for blood tests that um, celiac markers are found so there is some something happening there with gluten uh, which causes inflammation but it also explains why bloating and so many digestive problems are part of the picture of endometriosis um, and in a large study in the u.s among i think it was about ten thousand nurses who had endometriosis who went on a 12-month diet without gluten um, 75 percent saw a reduction in endometriosis symptoms including pain after the 12 months and most of them were able to stick with the gluten-free diet um, other studies have shown that there's an up to 50 percent reduction in pain after three months um, now i tend to see these sorts of results after three months um, sometimes sooner i actually most women improve after just one month but i do more obviously than just remove gluten um, but gluten is absolutely a key element and those women who struggle with the, the gluten-free part of it see less of a, an improvement than those who diligently stick to it so what are gluten um, they are proteins in wheat um, and they make dough stretchy which is why we love wheat um, and leaky gut and inflammation create a reaction to the gluten which then makes the leaky gut worse it's a vicious cycle and we typically find so I, I put my myself in front of my slide um i'm going to hide myself for a moment oh nope oh 
sorry, I just want to do the slide because you can see. There we go. Now we can see everything on the slide. Um, so it's in bread and biscuits and pasta, breakfast cereals, and men, many, not many, many processed foods. Um, interestingly enough, um, I get some interesting responses from my clients when I talk about what contains wheat. And um, there is an assumption often that sourdough bread doesn't contain wheat, gluten. Or that spelt, one of my clients said, oh, but I eat spelt bread. I went, oh, that's still gluten. And spelt pasta, yeah, that's still gluten. Um, oats also contains gluten um, and is also often processed on machinery that also processes wheat products. So even uh, there's, there's not just the gluten in the oats, but also um, re uh, residue of other gluten. Rye, barley, millet, spelt, and semolina. So if that's the case, what do you remove and what do you replace it with? Um, one of the challenges when, with changing diet, it, it's one thing to say to, your, to clients, uh, take out um, uh, certain foods, stop eating those. But we are, especially in Western uh, cultures, we are very wheat-based in our um, uh, food choices. So what do you eat instead? So what I want to do is um, take you through and just let you re review your diet and see what you could eat instead. Um, in the emails that I sent before this webinar, I uh, sent you a link with uh, to this worksheet uh, and also in the Office tab underneath um, the slides, you will see that there's a link. So you can either download it and use that to um, do a bit of an exercise that we're going to do now, or you can just grab a piece of paper um, and maybe use the worksheet later if you like. Um, so what I would like you to do is just think about what you typically eat at the moment. And the more specific and the more ex extensive you can be, the easier it will be to find ways to remove gluten from your diet. So what do you eat typically for breakfast? What do you eat typically for lunch and dinner and snacks? And once you've written that down, and I'll show the previous slide again, highlight all those things you eat on a regular basis that contain gluten. Underline, scribble, circle, um, whatever works best. And then we'll look at what you can eat instead. So have a look. What foods do you eat from this list that uh, contain wheat or wheat germ or oats, rye, barley, millet, spelt, semolina? How much gluten do you get in a day? So take a moment to just jot some things down. All right. So let's have a look what you could eat instead. So what to eat for breakfast? You could. Um, I'm, um, I'm very much in favor of <laughs> eggs for breakfast. Um, any way they come, um, especially by adding some vegetables um, or, and fruit to your breakfast, you will create a really healthy breakfast that will sustain you for a very long time. Now, some people, some, some of my clients just don't eat breakfast. Um, they do it on the run or they, they get going and then at some point later in the day they get um, out and get something to eat, um, in which case I often recommend that they use smoothies, uh, non-dairy milk, or yogurt with some frozen or fresh food, some vegetables. I always recommend add some avocado, makes it lovely and creamy, and some pea protein powder. As you might notice, um, I say non-dairy because dairy protein has a similar reaction to uh, some similar interaction with um, endometriosis as gluten has, especially if you've had uh, recurring ear infections as a child. Uh, you're probably intolerant to dairy 
protein, not lactose, but protein. Um, Gluten-free bread, uh, if you're really keen on, on some sort of toast or bread for breakfast, um, there's some great recipes out there for gluten-free bread. I would caution against gluten-free bread that you can buy in the supermarket, not because it's not gluten-free. If it says it's gluten-free, it probably uh, you can trust that it is, but it's a processed bread. And any bread that you tend to buy in the supermarket um, is um, has lots of additives to it. Um, as I said before, there is there are many more strategies to managing your endometriosis um, symptoms through diet. Um, gluten is one of them, but it's also important to minimize any inflammatory foods that um, that you eat and anything processed tends to be quite inflammatory. So think about what you could probably replace your breakfast with to make it a gluten-free breakfast. So what about lunch? Well, um, salads, um, it's a bit cool for me at the moment for salads, but in summer I live on salads, uh, a good source of protein and a wide mix of raw or cooked vegetables together. Um, and uh, eat the rainbow in terms of vegetables, uh, at least three, but try and eat, um, add more different um, varieties to your salad. Same with soups, vegetable-based vegetable soups with a good source of protein added. And I am a big fan of leftover dinners. I may be a nutritionist, but I hate cooking. And um, I do, we do have home cooked meals all the time, every time, but I don't cook every day. I like to cook in bulk. Um, and because it's just me and my daughter, we can, it's a bit easier to cook double or sometimes triple. And um, I either freeze some or we have um, some, the same dinner again the later in the week, or I just have some of the leftover dinner for lunch. Um, if you eat dinner, that is, that is healthy and gluten-free. So what to eat for dinner? Well, the good old meat and three veg um, is, or fish and three veg is a great option. Maybe make it four veg if you want to make it a bit healthier. Uh, stir fries with brown rice. Um, the, the brown rice is important because, as opposed to white rice because it contains still the the skin on the on the rice and that contains vitamin b which is very important for you in terms of energy and and also hormones and lots of things uh lentil dishes um i definitely recommend to look more at lentils uh, pulses and legumes um, because they're a good source of protein uh, but also lentils in particular contain iron and most women with endometriosis are iron deficient if you do like your pasta, um, replace it with gluten-free or a legume-based pasta or use certain vegetables and cut them in strips and steam them and then use those as sort of a replacement pasta. So if you cook extra of this, you will have leftovers, which are lovely for lunch. And then what to eat as snacks? Well, a handful of nuts and a piece of fruit would make a nice snack. Uh, vegetables, raw red, vegetable sticks with hummus. Um, hummus is one of the easiest dips to make. If you have a blender, you can make hummus in just five seconds, really. Um, so, and it's much nicer than most store-bought hummus. So I recommend, and you can, and it's cheapest chips if you make a big amount. It's you can't get it for that price in the supermarket. Um, protein balls that are not oat-based, and in this case, I definitely recommend you make them yourself and not buy them um, because, again, when they are for sale in the supermarket, that means that they need to be able to stay on the shelf for a very long time, and so something will have happened to them to make that possible. And, that, again, if you have a blender, they're really easy to make. And the easiest snack of all is trail mix. Um, I ha always have a, a container of trail mix, which has some nuts, almonds, and some raw peanuts, and 
um, some sesame, um, what do we call, um, sunflower seeds, pepita, some shaved coconut, and just, and my daughter has a little bag that she takes to school with trail mix, and it's a great way to just eat um, little bits and very healthy. And nothing in there that will cause you um, problems. Now, it's a very important to realize that one, gluten-free gluten is just one strategy towards improving your endometriosis symptoms. It is, there are many more around what you eat and what you don't eat. Secondly, in my experience, I don't have, I can't think of any of my clients who only have endometriosis. Most also have other health concerns. And um, in fact, one of my clients has a thyroid has, has thyroid problems as well. And so it's very important when you try to change your diet to reduce your endometriosis symptoms that you don't make other health concerns worse. So just going uh, on, on your own on this can be a bit of a, a minefield. So if you want to take control of your endometriosis symptoms by changing what you eat, um, I run a 12-week program. It's called 12 Weeks to Eat Your Way to Less Pain. Um, it's a 12-week online program where you get 33 individual lessons. There's meal suggestions and recipes. There's consultation and support all online because I am an online clinic. And there's three versions or packages that you can choose from. There is the starter package, which is, it's called, it's kind of the DIY package for those of you who like to just do it by yourself. But also if endometriosis is the only health concern you have, you get, you get the online program, so you work through it at your own uh, pace, um, but you do get a 30-minute consultation at some point in the 12 weeks to make sure that you're on track and um, to see if, the, if, if everything it works as you would hope. Um, there's a light support package, which I really recommend to anyone who has more than one health issue uh, because it's got everything from the starter package, but also a full health review questionnaire and a 60-minute consultation where we really look at everything that's going on and you get a personalized nutrition plan. Plus, you have a 30-minute follow-up consultation to make sure you're on track. Um, and you can pay in installments, which is always nice. And then for those of you who have lots of things going on or and or feel that you need more support to actually make all the diet changes, um, I've got the full support package where you have everything, including the health review and consultation, plus six follow-up sessions over the three months. It's about a fortnightly um, check in. Um, for this particular uh, natural medicine week, I have a special offer. That is, you get the program, you get a digital copy of my endometriosis book. Um, you also get free enrollment in a course that I developed at the beginning of my um, clinic when I was just a general children's health and women's health clinic, strategies for fussy eaters. I designed that for mums who had fussy eating toddlers. Um, and I've kept the course because I found that a lot of the mums said they actually needed to use those strategies to get themselves to eat healthier. And it helps with um, diet change is hard, right? It's one thing to know what to eat, but there's all these things going on that make it really hard to stick with um changing with, with making the changes to your diet and sticking to that and so this course addresses uh, those problems and gives very um, easy strategies to make the change without anybody really noticing so people uh, families can eat healthier by not realizing that they're eating healthier and for women who go on this journey it can help make the change easier so you get that as well um, now, because it's Natural Medicine Week, um, you get 20% off the enrollment fee in the program uh, if you use the coupon code NATMED2020. The capitals are important. 
if you don't use them, you know, it's not going to work. Um, this offer expires on Sunday midnight when Natural Medicine Week finishes. And if you go to the Offers tab underneath this slide, you will get, see a link to the program page where you can find out more information and sign up if these, this is something that you think will be useful. Um, now, there's two things I hear often when either I do talks like this or actually when clients start out with me and in their first consultation. And the first thing is that they say, I already eat a healthy diet. And I don't doubt it because I think when you are ready to, when you're looking into diet as a way to manage a disease, you're already looking at nutrition as medicine or understanding that diet is important to maintain health. What, and I think sometimes what they expect to find out is that when they do this program, that there's really nothing that they should do differently because they were already very good. But here's the, the thing. The general guidelines for healthy eating are designed for healthy people. When you have endometriosis, you are not healthy. You have a disease. And unfortunately, for that disease, the general healthy diet is making you sick. Many elements in a normal healthy diet that would be great for people who just want to make sure that they reduce their risk of uh, various diseases will make you more sick. So we need to have a therapeutic diet, a diet that will reduce your inflammation, reduce your symptoms, and that a normal diet, healthy diet, will not do this. The second thing I then hear is, why wasn't I told about this when I was diagnosed? And wouldn't it be lovely if your GP and your gynecologist and your obstetrician knew about diet and endometriosis but you have to remember they are specialists the gynecologists are specialists in the reproductive female reproductive system um, they don't know about diet they had about two uh, two hours of lecture uh, when they studied right at the beginning of their um, when they started studying medicine about nutrition it's not their specialty and they know about the the uterus they know about female hormones they know about the mechanics of it they know about the function of it they don't know about the digestive system and the immune system and your gp knows a little bit about a whole lot of different things so of course they don't know the detail and they they can't keep up with this so i wish they all knew and I wish when you first started to talk to medical specialists about your, about your symptoms and when you get diagnosed that immediately there was a go on a different diet thing, but that's not the case. But it is um, a common, <laughs> common frustration um, and, and I was frustrated initially. Okay, so that's, kind, that's the content. I'm going to put myself back in your view. I'm still here and I'm going to see if there are any questions. Now, I would be lovely if if you have a question, if you could put it in the questions tab underneath um, the screen, because what that means is when I answer the question, I can actually click on it. And then in the replay, you can see a question and go straight to the answer. So that's a very handy um, uh feature I think okay so let me see what's there so Doris okay that was all good on your end you you could hear me so I'll mark that as answered uh, and you always also said there's a good bread out in the health food shops for matures rice and buckwheat excellent uh, yeah so there are really good gluten-free breads out there uh, just be very careful with the um, when it's pre-packaged and when it might be, um, uh, when it might have been processed, 
because some of the ingredients could be counterproductive in improving your um, endometriosis symptoms. So be and but really there are uh, and they can be quite expensive. Whereas if you find a good recipe for gluten free bread, then uh, you can bake it yourself for a lot less money. And if you really like your bread, then that might be a good option as well. Any other questions, please feel free to put it in the questions tab so that I can answer them here. And whether that is uh, for you as a practitioner or for, for those of you who have endometriosis and want to reduce your symptoms. I'm going to have a sip of water now. While I just have a look and see if there are any questions. If you're anything like me when I do webinars, my, my, my great questions always come after. <laughs> so that's you, that's fine. Absolutely fine. Just get in touch. Actually, I'll show you how to get in touch should you want to. There's, um, so you can go to my website, eatwelllivewell.com.au. You don't need the capitals, but I put those in because there's in the middle three L's. Um, I hadn't thought that through when I came up with the business name. I'm on Facebook, Eat Well, Live Well with Endometriosis. I'm on Instagram, Eat Well, Live Well with Endometriosis. And my email address is anamarika at eatwelllivewell.com.au. Or reply to any of the emails that you have received about this webinar or that you will receive after with your replay link. Um, it all comes to me. Okay, so Doris talked again about that bread. Great. So it's gluten-free, it's only the basic ingredients and six days shelf life. That's fantastic. That is a really good option. Um, and um, I hope it's also a nice bread. I think if you're used to normal bread, it takes a little adjusting uh, to the taste of gluten-free bread, um, but it, it still gives you the opportunity to have toast and um, if that's really something that you enjoy, then that's a great option. So thank you, Doris. Thank you for letting us know about that. Okay, any other questions, either from a practitioner point of view or from your own point of view, living with endometriosis? Right, well, while you ponder, um, as I said at the beginning, one of you can win a free nutrition consultation with me. And the way we're going to do that, if you're interested in that, um, we're going to, I'm going to use the chat to draw a winner. If you would like to be in the draw for a free nutrition consultation, I want you to type into the chat box, pick me, and I'm picking one of you who writes that in the chat box. So if you would like to be eligible, write in the chat box, pick me, and then I will pick one of you and I will let you know how to get that sorted. So I'll give you a couple of minutes. Of course, if we have mostly protect practitioners, maybe not, but feel free to, if you want to talk more about uh, endometriosis and how to work with women in your practice, let me know. Oh, question. Oh, Doris. <laughs> okay. That was in the questions box, but that's fine. I can have one. Anybody else want to go in? I'm sure that there will be people who watch the replay later who will go, oh, I wish I'd been able to come in. No. Okay. Well, Doris, you're the only one who's keen. So there you go. You get your free consultation and I will send you an email to get that sorted. So if there's nothing else anybody wants to ask or want to find out about, um, thank you for being here today. It was really exciting and I was very happy. I'm very glad that I could share this with you. I hope you really got some useful ideas about 
why gluten are such a problem in endometriosis and how to remove it from the diet. Um, and any questions, just get in touch. And as you know, as I said at the beginning, practitioners, if you would like um, more information in terms of research and stuff, uh, happy to, um, to send that to you, just send me an email. So on that note, no more questions. Oh, what is happening here? You're very welcome, Doris. Very welcome. Looking forward to talking with you. Um, and have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you very much.